How's everybody doing today? Good morning. Good morning. Um, this one's going to be, all right, let me start here. We're, we're going to be on page 29, which is begin our blessing of five, the joyful Christian. All right. All right, start with some prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I pray that you bring us to know what true joy is, God, true peace, God. Again, not, not what the world can give us, God, but only you. And I pray that you bring us to walk in, in joy, God, to, to not let the world break us, God, or take us, God, or, or lead us astray from you, God. But I pray that you meet every satisfaction, God, as, as, as you're known to do, God, that we may follow you and trust you. Jesus. Um, again, I, like I was telling Pastor Gary, you guys, I just want to keep the engagement a little better for the other, for those in school. It's one thing to just sit up there and you know hear a professor or a teacher talk, but it's one thing when you're engaged and kind of hold the memory of it a little more. I just want this to be super valuable to you guys. I don't want to just be up here for you or you know the checklist and all the checklist. Um, so, like I said, the lesson here is lesson five, the joyful Christian. Nature of the joy of the world. Every, everyone wants to be happy. This is certainly one of the chief goals of people everywhere. Is there enjoyment in the world? Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiastes 11, 9, which says, Rejoice, rejoice, O young man, and thy youth. And let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. According to this verse, what does the average person do in order to secure enjoyment? Which we just read. Anybody know? They walk in their heart and they walk in their eyes. So basically, whatever you see or whatever it takes, that's what you do. Whatever is fascinating to you or appealing to you. Man. What is the end result of doing these things? Which was the last, uh, the last segment of that that scripture. I, I'll even read it again for you guys. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. 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 So God brings these things that you do into judgment, into account. Into account. What is the nature of the joy of the unsaved person? Job 25. That the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment. So it's short for the unsaved person. The enjoyment is short, and it's for a moment. It doesn't last. Man. Sin is deceiving in that while it is always offering happiness, it always leads to unhappiness and final misery. Relationship of joy to fellowship with God. In Revelation 4.11, we read in the King James Version that man was created for God's pleasure. Likewise, man, who in his original state was pure and holy, had the privilege of enjoying fellowship with God. However, this fellowship and this joy was disrupted when men sinned. And because of this sin, he was separated from God. He might look for pleasure in his simple state, but the joy that he receives cannot compare to the joy that he received when he was in fellowship with God. Amen. But God, because of his infinite love for us, provided a plan of salvation whereby it would be possible for us to again have fellowship with him. This was made possible by the coming of Christ into the world and by his death, burial, and resurrection. Christ became our sin bearer, uh, sin bearer and by receiving Christ Jesus as our personal savior, our sins are forgiven. Romans 4, 5 tells us that our faith is counted for righteousness. Since our sins are what separates us from God, 
Isaiah 59 2, where you guys can find that scripture. Now that our sins are forgiven, we can and do enjoy fellowship with God. And that scripture will be located in 1 John 1 3. What does this fellowship with God produce according to Psalm 1611? Thou will show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, at thy right hand, there are pleasures evermore. So it shows that it's fullness of joy, it's complete joy. It's not the, the joy that you have to worry about. One hard time in life or something coming up that you lose. This is fullness of joy and forevermore. Again, which translates to you can never lose this. Those those of you who have tasted and seen the Lord is good, Psalm 38, uh, 34, 8, know something of this joy that we have in Christ. How did Peter describe this joy in 1 Peter 1 8? Whom have not seen ye love, and whom Thou now ye see him not, yet believe him, ye rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. So unspeakable and full of glory. And uh, I think the unspeakable part is so, not mystique, but it, it, it does lead, show us a bigger, a much, much bigger picture behind the curtain than, than what people think of when you say it's unspeakable. It's almost like uh, in the Bible where Okay, yeah, I think this is, you know, this is really important, especially in today's day and age, because of all the depression that's going on, all the overwhelming, with everybody's kind of got this huge yoke on their shoulders, they're walking, as he said, in the lusts of their own flesh and seeking pleasure in the things of this world, and all this has done is bring depression and bring this, this, this uh, horrible, horrible way of thinking, and yet, when we come into Christ, even the worst that this world has to offer brings joy to us. The Bible says, Jesus says, in this world you will have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer. In other words, he wouldn't say be unless you could be. Amen? When he says, let there be light, there is light. I mean, the Lord, when he speaks, gives us joy and joy unspeakable. And this unspeakable joy really is a joy that cannot be conjured by the flesh. We can't just make ourselves be happy. This is something that happens when you all of a sudden are consumed with the Spirit of God who sees beyond the circumstances of this life. And you know the outcome. So you're kind of like almost watching, you know, everyone goes to these horror movies and everyone's going to all these other movies and you're kind of eating popcorn watching this thing and you know you're going to be alive at the end of this, you know? You get this little uh, rush because you're seeing all this horrible stuff happen, which isn't, I'm not saying this is a good thing. I'm just saying that you know at the end of it, you're getting up from your thing, you're going to throw your popcorn in the bin because you're going to walk away. And it's even better than that. You're not only going to walk away, but God's going to take the horror of this life and use it to bless you. Turn it around. Even the devil of this world who's haunting you, he will turn around. Even your evil thoughts, he will turn around. Even the, the, the things and the concoctions and everything going wrong in your life you think is going wrong, God is ordered and is allowing so you can see his perfection, how he can take it out of the garbage and make a diamond. Amen? This is, this is unspeakable. It's not something that can be comprehended by men. Matter of fact, the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding, but on every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, because that's what we lead. And he said it, it's our faith. Righteousness comes by our faith and belief in what God says, that Jesus atoned for our sins. When you're condemned, when you're overwhelmed, when you're beaten up by all this stuff, it doesn't mean keep going in it. It means... Walk away from it. You have the power. And by the way, not only do you have the power, but you've been washed, made clean, new. It's gone. It has no authority over you anymore. You have a new master. This is joy unspeakable. Okay. Yep, yep. <laughs> what commandment is given to the Christian in Philippians 4.4? 4? Rejoice in the Lord all, always. And again, I say rejoice. Only the Christian has lasting joy. His joy is not only in this world, but will continue in the world to come. In John 15, 11, Jesus said, These things I have spoken unto you, 
that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. What were two things included in these things? Um, I'm going to read that again and again. I'm going to give everybody a chance to answer that. My uh, written down ones here, but I want to give everybody a chance to answer this one. I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it. In John 15 11, Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. What were the two things included in the phrase at the beginning, these things, in that whole scripture? Anybody know? Joy. Joy. Joy might be full. That's correct. That's one of them. You know that. Christ's joy. Yeah, God is joy. Right? Who knows all things. Who always rejoices in the Father. And there's no anxiousness in Jesus. Even when he was, you know, going through everything he went through. Amen. And then there's just one more and everybody has it. It's something. It never, it's never going to leave you. It remains in you. So that's the second one I have here. Amen. When we abide in the Lord and do his commandments, then there is nothing to interrupt our fellowship with him, and our joy will be full. What happened to David's joy in Psalm 51 12? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, uphold me with thy true spirit. So, what happened to David's joy? He lost the joy of his salvation, of being saved, of, of being of Christ. He lost it, the fire. The pastor. How did David lose his joy? Psalms 51, verse 4. Against thee, thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. So David said, you know, uh, I heard a guy one time say, sin breeds insanity. When you sin, <laughs> you go insane. Um, because you're covering up, you're hiding, you're running, you're doing things to kind of cope. Uh, so that's what happened in, in David's case here. He sinned against God. It could be even said that you don't sin unless you're insane. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You yeah. lose your mind when yeah. you sin. Yeah, that's true. Even that, it could go both ways. What did David in verse 2, 3, and 9 and 10? Or, I'm sorry, what did David do in verses 2, 3, 9, and 10? So I just read... Uh, Wash me through thee from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Amen. So again, that's just rather more clear indication that David had transgressed against God. And what he did was repent. Yeah. He, he sought God in prayer, in humility, recognized his sin, recognized God had the, not only the power but the authority to wash him of those sins mm. and to bring restore fellowship. So we see that the joy of the believer is dependent on his walk with him. We can never lose our salvation, but we can lose our joy. If we sin, the Lord is displeased and our fellowship with him is temporarily broken and our joy disappears. If we want the Lord to restore the joy of our salvation, then we must do as David did. We must acknowledge our sin before the Lord and ask for his forgiveness. Then our fellowship and our joy is restored. And I'm, uh, I just want to cut it there. I'm going to just say something real quick and then I'll cut it there. Um, so I heard a guy on a video one time say, uh, he was asking these two people, he said, if I could give you 10 million right now, would you be happy? I'll ask you guys that. If I gave you 10 million right now, would you guys Trick question. Happy or joyful? Two different things. It's either two. one. Happy. We could go either uh, one. Yeah, I'll say happy. Okay. Happy. All right. So if you would be happy, and then he said, if I gave you 10 million right now, but you couldn't wake up tomorrow, would you still be happy? <laughs> would you still want the 10 million? Mm -hmm. And of course, they're like, no, nah, no. Nah. So it showed you. How precious life is, I Amen. think. And I was just thinking how it translates to kind of the Christian side because if somebody says, I'll give you life where you have all these things, whether they're good or bad, but you have all these things you can enjoy, you say yes. But then what are what if I say you can have Jesus too? Or you can depart from him or never know who Jesus is. You know, would you take it? Would it be worth it? But anything in the world be worth it. 
and he could never know the truth. So it's just kind of uh, a thing, an initiative we should take, everybody should take to follow Christ and know who we are. Amen. And I know some of you guys know who Simon Powell is from like um, the American Idol and all this stuff. And, and it's not just him, I'm, I'm drawing him out because he was just recently in the news. But he had he had like severe severe depression and broke down. He's he's close to being a, a half a millionaire. So money doesn't bring joy nor contentment ever, never. We we get this lie that well if I have this I'll be happy. No, you need the whole word to be content. Yep, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna close out here in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I pray that you bring us to have real joy, God. Not the fleeting joy, God, not the vain joy of the world, God, but the true and everlasting, God, and, and f fulfilling joy, God, that only you can give, God. And I pray that you will uh, bring us to have peace, God, to have contentment, God. I pray that you bring us to be as Paul, God, to, to be content, God, with much and, and to be content with nothing, God, as long as we have you, God. And I pray that you bring us to have the, the heart of Job, God, to, to, to love you, trust you when we have